Last video, I played really bad Steam games, and it was actually really fun. So I'm gonna do it again, but uh, this time, spooky. Yeah, so I may want to get a new pair of undies, because I'm gonna be playing the lowest rated, cheapest horror games I can find. Just the most bottom of the barrel stuff. And who knows, maybe I might find some really good stuff. Some seriously good deals. Only way to find out is to hop right in. The first game up was John Condemned, and this game really caught my eyes. It got me asking a bunch of questions. Like, who's John? Why is he condemned? And why does this have mostly negative reviews? Oh, because it's bad. But hey, I don't know that. I haven't even played it yet. So, there's really only one way to find out. So the game starts off with its opening credits for Unreal Engine 4 and Blue Commands, but they somehow mess up the camera angle, so it looks like we're looking through a square portal into the credits dimension. I don't even know how they managed that, and along with that you can still see the health bar. But anyway, that's only a tiny pet peeve. As for the game itself, I'll have to say, it has really good voice acting. It is entirely in Spanish, so without the subtitles I would have no idea what they're saying, despite taking Spanish for the past four years, but it sounds really good. The dude has a very good voice. Me estoy empapando. Suerte que ya llego. La cabaña debería de estar por aquí según las coordenadas. As for the game itself, well, you start out as good old Johnny Condemned here, and he's a killer. And his dad was too, some sort of hitman or mob boss. And since his birth, he was raised to be the best assassin on earth, until one day he's sent out on his final mission. He's walking through a cold, wet forest when boom, a big floating ball of cum. He approaches it and starts tripping balls. That's when the big ball of floating cum starts talking to him and then shoots him. This causes his soul to go to a purgatory style maze. The big ball of cum starts talking to him again. Every single purple speck you see in this room is the soul of someone you or your father killed, trapped to wander these halls forever. And like, sweet, it's like, f damn. Who was this guy? Genghis Khan? Like, this dude must have got a 25 player kill streak. To have killed this many people, he wouldn't need a tactical nuke. Why, also, as you've just seen, I got hit with one of the scariest jump scares known to man. It is a pretty spooky game. It's like ghosts or stuff. <laughs> what was that? But soon the spooky skeleton makes a return. I touch the glowing skull and boom. Spooky mannequins. So scary. John was paralyzed in fear. Or maybe just accidentally clipped into one mannequins and couldn't move. Yeah, I somehow got stuck inside of a mannequin and I and I, I I could just not move no matter what. I just had to completely close the game and reopen it. But when I opened it, I saw that I actually had a save file. I opened up the save file and it seems to be like tr like halfway through the game or something. I don't even know how this happened. Maybe the developer left like his save file in the game or something. Anyway, I didn't want to go to the opening scene again, so I just went with it. There's this weird clown dude saying how he knew a way for me to get out. I started twerking on him. That went pretty hard. And then like a gate opened to another dimension. I go through it and I end up in this like lab place. Each door in the lab was sealed with an electric fence. However, there were laptops where I could deactivate these fences. On these laptops are audio tapes. And as you listen to them, it unveiled the story of a scientist who slowly went mad. He eventually locked the laboratory down with his apprentices in it, where he then planned to dissect an experiment on them. I actually found this part of the game pretty interesting. Having John go through the last moments of other killers, experiencing the lives of their victims, as kind of a way to make sure he truly does leave this past behind him. However, in this map, there is an elevator, and this elevator goes up and down. I decided to put John out of his misery by just standing underneath the elevator. However, that didn't work. Instead of being crushed, I just completely phased through the floor. Yup, it seemed the floor of the elevator had no collision. This then caused me to clip into the wall where I was stuck. With this being my second time getting stuck in a wall, I decided to put an end to it there. My final toss on John Condemned? The game definitely has some interesting parts, and the voice acting is pretty good. However, it is very janky. Subtitles overlap on top of each other so you can't read them. You keep getting clipped into stuff where you just can't move. Some of the jump scares are just straight up goofy. But overall, compared to some of the games I played last time, this one holds up fairly well. The second game I played was Bitweb, and this game caught my eyes because of its description. Simple addictive gameplay about zorning your way through a maze. You can zorn the inner and outer gates surrounding your character with the ones from the cell of your choosing. I have no idea what zorning is, but I'm excited. The only time I've ever heard the word zorn is from the phrase zerking off the zorn. <laughs> so already this game's shipping up pretty well. I can't wait to see their zerking mechanics. Oh yeah, two little bits of information I want to add on. It has about 100 negative reviews, and one of the only positive reviews I can find starts with, I was recommended this game via a prostitute, and it can run on Windows XP. Actually, it's recommended to run on Windows XP.
XP. So yeah, let's try this. Once you click start, you're thrown right into the game. I mean literally thrown right into the game. There's no main menu, no tutorial, nothing. You're just right in there. And this doesn't really work because I have no idea what to do. What is zorning? How do I zorn? Who are these guys? Are they gonna zorn on me? They gonna start zerking off on me? What's happening? Oh, of course. It's the logical operation exclusive disjunction. Okay, now I get how I play the game. Let me just press escape real quick to fix my settings. Ah. I see. So I start playing the game and it's pretty simple. There's these wolf things and they bite you. Except you don't actually take any damage. You just lose points. Points you get by picking up these little like, I don't even know what they are. They're like flares, drinking potions, getting chests, or gathering babylicious bay. <laughs> and I'm being real with you, there's not much beyond that. What you're seeing on screen now is pretty much the entire thing. Like this is all there is to the game. As you saw before, there's no opening, no main menu, no tutorial. You open the game and it's just this. You press escape, the game closes itself. It's, yeah, what you see is what you get right here. The third game is Paranormal Teens, a indie evangelical Christian visual novel. Well, at least according to the reviews, which are also mostly negative. It's made by Godline and Visual Wordplay. Makes sense because saying it's a visual novel and it's very Christian. And they've made one other game, The Sibling Experiment. And I'll be real with you, I don't even want to give this one a chance. Oh yeah, also one more tiny bit of information. The game is an IMBD page, where it has one user review, 2 out of 10. Since it's a visual novel, of course there isn't much gameplay, so let's give a quick plot synopsis. You're a paranormal investigator on a show called Paranormal normal teens. The whole crew has their own personality and gimmick. One's a demonologist, one's a psychic in training, one's a conspiracy theorist, one is just some dude obsessed with aliens. But anyway, they go to the crash site, some freaky alien shit happens, and the only way to make sure no one dies and you get the good ending is to convert to Christianity and start praying to Jesus. Overall, pretty based. And for an evangelical Christian game, it is surprisingly good gay rep. I can be honest, the game isn't that bad. I like the dynamic of a lot of the characters. And sure, yes, by the end of the game, it gets very Christian, so I get if that puts you off if you don't like religious influence in your games. But if you don't take it too seriously and kind of go with the goofiness of the game, it's actually pretty fun. Since it's a story game, I won't talk too much more. It's free in Steam, so if you want to see more of it, go check it out. There's also some pretty funny quotes to be had from this game, such as, why do UFOs and aliens flee in the name of Jesus Christ? And that sucks, but on the flip side, sometimes the background and the art style as a whole can suddenly switch from hand-drawn to just actual real PNGs. And sometimes it can actually be kinda creepy. The next game is Sower Dolls, and I'll be honest with you here, I broke the video's rules for this one. This game is positively rated, and on top of that, it's paid. Yup, I busted out the big bucks for this one. 22 cents. But I just had to. The publisher who publicized this game, Kuko, has just put out so many bangers, such as 3D High <laughs> Shooter, and <laughs> Shooter 2 World Tour, High <laughs> Shooter 3D Christmas Party, and <laughs> Shooter 2 Uncensored Edition, and <laughs> I Detective, and Cute Cats 1 True Tree. So in short, yeah, this game had big shoes to fill. I booed the game up, it had a pretty funky start. The start menu was pretty bare bones, but I got the job done. We soon find out the game is set in Lazyville, leading me on to assume that this game is set in the same universe as Lazy Town, but this time a bit more sinister, with ghouls, goblins, gnolls, flipped assets. Very scary. And the only way to stop it is to find five dolls. So I start exploring the town, ghostly whispers skirmaging to my ears. Oh hell no, it's way too dark, fuck out of here. Okay, spooky ambiance talk put to the side. The lighting on this game is a bit messy. Like when there's no lights in a room, there is no lights in the room. It's not even dark in a scary way. Like your screen is literally just pitch black. So you're just fumbling in pure darkness trying to find this statue. Oh, hello, Mrs. Amputee Lady. Ah, oh, she seems to be sleeping all right. That's the face I make when I'm sleeping peacefully. But eventually the spook master himself found me. There I was, face to face with the gimp man of Somerset, England. I tried to run, but he was too fast. I was captured. And after after dying, I was met with the scariest music I've ever heard in my entire life. Yup, when I think scary music, that's what comes to my mind. Luckily on my second run, I found out his weakness was half a meter tall fences. And also that he doesn't run, he just slides. He, <laughs> he just has no walking animation. 
Yeah, so uh, a lot of the games today were subpar. However, they do seem to be made with passion. I do hope the devs who worked in them and made them were able to learn something and go on to make greater things. Who knows? Maybe they're out there right now in the progress of making a fantastic game, a real piece of art, something that will change the world, or maybe just more <laughs> games. Either way, this is pretty fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as me. If you did, subscribe to check out the next one. And uh, yeah, that's it. See ya.